So hello again, my name is Dr. Alessandro De Mayo and welcome to the second lecture in your week on non-communicable diseases. This uh, lecture is entitled Global Burden Disease, the Rise of NCDs and builds on an earlier lecture that Dan Marovich, uh, back at the start of your course, gave you on the Global Burden of Disease study that was released uh, again last year in 2012. But in particular we're going to focus on one aspect of that and that is the rise of NCDs and the findings relating to uh, non-communicable disease globally. But before we do that we need to just recap on one thing. I want to uh, go over the concept of disability adjusted life years or DALYs with you one more time because this is going to be the main indicator that we use to monitor burden um, and disease outcomes for the risk factors but also diseases associated within uh, non-communicable diseases. So disability adjusted life years, as we explained back at the start of the course, includes years of life lost plus years of life lost to disability. That is, a normal healthy life will have a beginning, a middle and an end. If someone dies earlier than expected, based on global projections, then we include those years that they lost to death. And if they have times of disability or disease in their life, we, we uh, use a uh, a fraction, a, a, a simple uh, measure to work out how many years of life loss to disability that corresponds to depending on the disease. So those two combined give us a measure of disability adjusted life years. If you've forgotten this, go back and have another look at the lecture from early in the course, but we'll, we'll move on for now. So what is the global burden of disease? Well the global burden of disease is a, an analysis which provides a comprehensive and comparable assessment of mortality and the loss of health for all regions of the world. The overall burden of disease is assessed using, as I mentioned, disability adjusted life years or DALYs. The original Global Burden of Disease study or GBD 1990 study was, com was commissioned by the World Bank uh, in 1991 to provide a comprehensive assessment of the burden of 107 diseases and injuries and 10 selected risk factors for the world and eight major regions within the world in 1990. The methods of the GBD 1990 study created a common metric to estimate the health loss associated with morbidity and mortality globally. It generated widely published findings and compar comparable information on disease and uh, injury indices. And uh, also gave us a snapshot of incidence and prevalence for diseases around the world's regions. It also stimulated numerous national studies on the burden of disease. And these results have been used by government and non-government agencies to inform priorities for research, development, policies, and funding since. The principle guiding the burden of disease approach is that the best estimates of, in, of, in, of uh, incidence, prevalence and mortality can be generated by carefully analysing all available sources of information in a region or, an, or, a, or a country and by correcting for biases. So let's have a look now at uh, how the Global Burden of Disease study works in some more detail. First of all, the Global Burden of Disease studies provide an assessment of the health of the world's populations. They provide detailed regional and global estimates for premature mortality, disability and loss of health for 135 causes uh, by age and by sex. They draw on extensive WHO databases and on information provided by uh, the member states. Today there is great demand for global burden estimates and research and advocacy groups have brought new conditions to the awareness of the public health community. With that in mind, in 2010, sorry, with that in mind, the 2010 Global Burden of Disease Study reviews the magnitude of these conditions compared to other causes of health burden. The Global Burden of Disease 2010 is significantly broader in scope than the previous versions, particularly 1990. It includes 291 diseases and injuries, 67 risk factors, 
1,160 non-fatal health consequences. It estimates for 21 regions, it estimates for 20 age groups, and it uses improved methods for the estimation of health state severity weights. Researchers have also significantly improved methods for burden uh, assessment since the original Global Burden of Disease study in 1990. And so these new tools can markedly enhance the validity of estimations, particularly for ranking risk factors and disabilities. So let's now skip forward and have a look at some of the key findings of the 2010 uh, Global Burden of Disease study, and also compare these to the findings from 1990 and see how the world's uh, morbidity, mortality, measured through disability adjusted life years has changed. So some of the findings of the uh, 2010 Global Burden of Disease study uh, published in 2012 include years lived with disability for 1,160 uh, non-fatal outcomes of 289 diseases and injuries from the 1990 to 2010 region. Also it gives healthy life expectancies for more than 187 countries. So we've looked at how the Global Burden of Disease study is uh, structured and why it came about. Let's have a look at some of the findings. So here on the screen you see the top 20 causes of uh, deaths across the globe ranked from 1 to 20 depending on their contribution of, of global mortality. This is for both sexes and all ages. It, what you'll notice if you look across the colours to begin with, blue is NCDs, red is uh, infectious diseases and also maternal and child health, and green is, uh, is uh, injuries. What you'll notice is that the leading causes of uh, death in 1990 and 2010, the top two in fact haven't changed. They are ischemic heart disease and stroke. COPD has uh, overshot lower respiratory infections to become number three. Lung cancer has increased from number eight to number five. And across the board, a pretty consistent uh, change has been the increase in rankings for NCDs. At the same time, we've seen a decrease in the ranking of most infectious diseases, malaria, tuberculosis, diarrheal diseases, and lower respiratory infections, to name a few in the top 10. The standout, obviously, um, uh, example of, of running contrary to this is HIV, which, is, uh, we've, which we've seen an enormous increase of uh, in the last 20 years. If we now change it from global to first developed, we see the first thing that we notice is a, is, a, is a dramatic change in the colour representation, that is a dominance of NCDs. We also notice that the top six causes have largely remained unchanged. Although we have seen an increase in these diseases, these diseases and the mortality caused, the rankings haven't in fact changed. We have seen though a dramatic increase in Alzheimer's disease, diabetes and cirrhosis, so liver disease. And we've seen uh, slight reductions in stomach cancer and also road injuries. If now we move to developing countries, but remaining on causes of mortality, uh, mean rankings, we see a lot more of a dominance of the red colours coming back, so communicable diseases. And we see some quite dramatic changes from 1990 to 2010. Stroke uh, moves from number two to number one, ischemic heart disease moves from number five to number two. COPD remains constant uh, at, uh, at number three. Lower respiratory infections decrease along with diarrheal diseases. And, and as I mentioned earlier, the, the, uh, the main one running in contrary to this trend is, is obviously 